<clears throat> so one of the unique aspects that you're bringing to the study of living by inches is that you have been a park ranger at Andersonville, and you also mentioned that you worked at the Val Franklin Carter House for a little bit. So, well, the first question I want to pose was kind of this public history perspective is, being interested in sensory history, how would you communicate this to an audience, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're giving a tour in 30 minutes here at Andersonville, how would you communicate to the group of people that smell when the gates open, the kind of visual of that? Well, you know, and, and to do it you know, faithfully to the literature, mm -hmm. uh, and to do it without simply trying to kind of turn it into a, yeah, we're experiencing this, um, is really difficult. All that is, is very difficult to do. Um, and. It depends on you know depends on the group. Uh, so it's certainly not something that I would do to uh, you know to, to every talk, talk to to every audience. But you know going out to Andersonville and looking at the topography mm -hmm. is a way of saying you know this thing bring in the, the, the 19th century ideas about sanitation and drainage, mm -hmm. and you know you go out to you see, you see that, that you know the, the stream running through you know two hillsides together. You say this is the this is a visualization of 19th century ideas about uh, healthy landscapes. This is not designed to be a deadly landscape. It has the, the effect of being a deadly landscape because of human choices. Very deadly landscape. But, but um, what we can, but we can also see kind of the mental uh, uh, planning going on in this. Um, another, sometimes you know, the, the visitors themselves bring this in, in a way, and, and, um, and especially getting at this idea of, of captivity as being a decivilizing process. It's all kind of related into the sensory experience. I was giving a, a bus tour of a bunch of middle school students. Uh, it was raining, so, you know, in, in 2015, that means that we're not going outside. We're taking a little bus around mm -hmm. the, uh, the prison park, and I was going around, and I was talking about, you know, the, the dysentery and talking about the, you know, the, the death rates and so forth. And we got to a little section of the prison site that had these reconstructions mm -hmm. of the of the tents, and I was saying, you know, there's visually what we've reconstructed here is not is, is not exactly as it would have been. Right? It's an interpretation, mm -hmm. uh, and there's certain things that uh, we, we can't do because of for archaeological reasons. For instance, the prisoners would have um, you know dug into the the, the, the grounds, you know, they, you know, take advantage of, of, of thermal. Uh, Heating and cooling, and as I was I was doing this, I was looking around the, the, the bus, and there's this, this this kid, eighth grade, um, you know, in, in in a camouflage jacket, and he had mm -hmm. done nothing but kind of stare forward. Didn't look like he was having a, a good time sure. throughout the entire um, uh, the, the, entire, the entire bus ride. And he he blurts out as I'm saying this. He goes, "That's what animals do." Mm -hmm. And there's this this momentary pause, Silence. and where I was like, "Oh, is he going to get in trouble?" And I said, yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. And, and prisoners were aware of this too. Mm -hmm. And prisoners were uh, were deeply disturbed by the fact that they thought of themselves as living uh, more like farm animals or than they were used to, right? And and that gets back to the importance of sensory metaphors, right? A you know if 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 my wife says that you know this this room looks like it's a hog pen. Um, you know, neither of us have a, a, a reference for what, what a hog pen is, right? It's a dead metaphor. Right. For a farmer who is imprisoned in Andersonville, it's, a very, it's very much a living metaphor. Yes. Um, and so it's, you know, that's one of the ways to bring in you know, maybe some of the lessons of sensory history uh, mm -hmm. into, uh, into a tour without going to the historiography of it, without getting too theoretical, sure. without completely turning off your audience right, right. Uh, from a uh, from from what, what could be a meaningful moment. Right. 